Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Hometown PTBO, and very excited to have Greg Wells as our guest. I think this is the first time you've appeared on uh, this segment, so Wellesley, thanks very much, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for asking me to, to join. Well, it's always uh, a pleasure to have you. You're a busy guy. Uh, you're out in LA, I assume. Is that uh, where things are happening for you right now? That's where I'm sitting. All right. <laughs> what street did you grow up on in Peterborough? Uh, originally, it was Royal Drive, 1325 Royal Drive. And then when I was almost seven years old, we moved one street over to Amundsen Avenue, 1335 Amundsen Avenue. Did you physically just pick up the stuff and move it over or did your parents get a truck? I mean, we could almost like hoof it over the neighbor's house. I think yeah. I can't. I think there must have been a truck. Yeah, I, I, I remember some kind of moving truck, but I think there were a lot of car trips, too. OK. All right. Who was your favorite teacher of all time? Oh, like like in public school, yeah. like in elementary school, high school. Uh, I got to say there was a, an amazing dude in grade four named uh, Mr. Bark, Robert Bark, and he was he was fantastic. And I, I could never tell if he liked me or liked anybody until we got our first report card. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, because he was kind of talking to your parents, you know, he wasn't talking to to yeah. me, but he just, he just kind of very, very impartial and just sort of, you know, he was Influence. just a fantastic teacher. Okay. Very good. Uh, favorite restaurant in Peterborough, either from the past or well, obviously from the past, but. Uh, as a kid, it was absolutely high tops Chinese restaurant on George street. I don't know if high tops is still there. Is no, it? Unfortunately, probably eight years ago, it uh, closed up, but the sign still exists. Oh man. They kept the sign. I, I mean, I would, and, and it's like a dream. I would love to like own that sign somewhere and like put, you know, I should probably name this new studio, High Tops Studio. Uh, where did you buy your first guitar? My very first guitar was bought at Bud Monahan's. First album you ever uh, remember buying or record? Oh yeah, I know exactly what it is. Uh, it was at Towers in Peterborough, which of course doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, what is Towers now? Towers is now. Uh, That's a Walmart, I think. It's yeah. a Walmart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was a Jackson Five album, and and I had a uh, I had a Colonel Sanders piggy bank. Yeah. And I'd just been filling it up with pennies and you know nickels, and and eventually I opened it at some point, and I had eight dollars, and I'm like, whoa, my goodness, I can't believe I got eight bucks. And so we went to Towers and we would just go with my parents would like, we had no money really. And so we would just yeah. go to Towers and we never bought anything, but we, my brother and I would just go look at the toys yeah. and imagine that we could play with them and have them. And, uh, and I would go look at the albums and I would, and I just thought, I'm going to pick the one with the coolest album cover and I still have it. And I got a Snoopy lunchbox and a Jackson five album that, that night. That's a pretty good night. That's that's a good. That was it. What one of definitely the best night of my fifth year on Earth. Yes. Right. What is your favorite Kim Mitchell song to play? Ooh, that's a good question. If Kim called you up on stage right now, and you could play one song with him. What would you you know what? Do? I st I still I tell Kim this. I still have dreams. I'm playing in his band. Like it happens all the time. Um, there's quite a lot. Um. All we are. Okay. Right. Playing yeah. that is like a religious experience. I mean, listening to that song is like a religious experience, but I just can't express what it's like actually playing that bass line on that synth and then listening to Kim play his insane guitar soloing at the end of the song and Peter yeah. Burdett singing his ass off on the chorus. It's just like every time we did it, I just couldn't believe it was happening. That's a that's a great pick. Very good. Sorry. That one. That's good. What's your favorite Tim Hortons menu item when you're back in Canada? Mm. The coffee, actually, coffee. just just a black coffee. That is like legal crack. <laughs> do you, uh, speaking of Tim Hortons, do you know Justin Bieber? I uh, do not. No, my brother does. My brother's worked with him. I don't know him at all. Okay. So did you have any Bieber Bieber bits when you were back last month? He's got his no, own I haven't, I haven't bits. tried them yet. I okay. haven't tried them yet. Uh, I've, right. I've, yeah, I've heard about them, have not. I look forward to trying them. Last question. Who do you think would survive longer living in Peterborough 
Katy Perry or Keith Urban? Keith. Yeah. Yeah, sort of his sort of town, I guess, eh? With the country and the, the county and I mean Keith is just Yeah. I mean Katie, of course. You know, they're both like really beautiful, amazing people, but yeah. I think that uh I, don't know, I can't really articulate why, but I'm going to go with Keith. I think you'd blend in a little better, probably, maybe. I don't know. He looks like he'd be from uh, Dural or Ennismar or something. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So he's sort of, he is from the New Zealand version of that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Got the boots. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about uh, something you're involved in. You're giving back here in Peterborough with, uh, um, you know, a contest, if you will. Tell us quickly about that, because I know there's another deadline coming up, I think January 15th, to enter some music. That's exactly right. So this, uh, there, was a, um, there was another music store in Peterborough called Ed's Music Workshop. Yeah. And originally it was owned by a guy named Ed. Yeah. Um, but uh, a long, long, long time ago, he sold the business to a guy named Don Skuse. And Don worked at the shop. And Ed now, I think, lives in Las Vegas. I wanted to do something for Peterborough musicians because I am a Peterborough musician and I needed a lot of help and not just financially, but um, in every way to yeah. uh, pursue music. Um, it wasn't something I was really encouraged to do and uh, beyond a hobby. And I just thought maybe there's a way to honor Don's legacy and also do a thing and I kind of kicking around the idea like do I should I open some sort of recording studio in Peterborough so my old friend and my musical mentor John Crown uh who I've known I mean I've known about John since I was a little boy but I became yeah, friends with him when I, I became friends with him when I was 15. yeah and I so I called him and I said I've got this idea it's not really fully formed yet but I I you know and 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 John was very close with Don and, and John actually worked at, at Don's store for a while and learned how to be a luthier. And, um, and I think John is who introduced me to Don in the very beginning. I'm sure I know he is. Yeah. So I was like, what do you think? Like, should I open a studio? And he's like, no, 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 no. Don't, don't open a studio here because then you're in competition with the local studios. You don't want to do that. Why don't you just use a local studio here? Good point. And you don't have to spend the money and buy a bunch of gear and then oversee it exactly as you just said, Pete, like just use, you know, so uh, that's exactly what we're doing. And, um, uh, and John has really helped shape this whole thing. And uh, uh, John has kind of like become sort of the chairman of the, the board of, of it and is helping. So what it is, is it, it's for songwriters and they can submit um a song it can be really simple it can be just a you know just a live recording demo on a on a cell phone yeah. just like a voice memo or it can be what any kind of recording you want it to be and whoever you know wins the thing um i hate the idea of like giving out an award for the right. best music there's no there's really no such thing but, but it's a selection not a winner necessarily yeah it's exactly that's a really nice way to put it that's a really nice way to put it um so whoever gets selected as the song that we want to run with, uh, I got to feel, and John and the other people who I'm choosing to leave anonymous that help us decide, because I, don't, I just don't want people kind of, you know, I want it to be anonymous um, as yeah. much as possible, and so do they. I want it to feel like it represents Peterborough, but I, I also want it to feel like, hey, look what came from Peterborough at the same time, you know? So, um, they get to record at James McKenty's studio with James uh, producing it and recording. And James has a phenomenal studio and James himself is a phenomenal talent. And, um, and then once that's done, then it gets sent to me here in Los Angeles and I mix it. So this is just my way of trying to help, you know, uh, a younger version of me, the kind of help that I could have used. All right. Listen, Wellesley, thanks very much, Greg. We appreciate your time. Sounds like a lot of exciting stuff happening, and we appreciate you joining us here on Hometown PTBO. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Have a good one. Hometown PTBO with Pete Dalladay.